Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here with recent World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Laura Eisenberg. What'd you win? I won the ladies event. Nice. How much did they give you? It was 116k. Wow, that was a big tournament. So it was, it was. My biggest win to date. How was the experience of playing at a World Series of Poker final table? It was amazing. I'd never been on a streamed final table, and I'd never been at a major event final table. It was my first, so it was all new and very exciting. So when a lot of people go to their first final table, they are nervous. Were you nervous? Um, I think I didn't know until the day before that it was going to be streamed. And so, <laughs> um, so I didn't have time to get nervous about it before that. But then like, my biggest thing was I just didn't want to look like a fool. After 30 minutes, I thought, okay, I've had at least 30 minutes of not looking stupid, so pressure's off. You didn't want to be the first one out, huh? I didn't care if I was the first one out if I didn't do something ridiculous. There you so. go. I remember one of my first final tables. My first final table, I just like really didn't want to get bluffed because I knew I was against a bunch of people who were insane bluffers. So I'm calling down, right? And then they just showed me nuts, nuts, nuts. I'm like, oh, I guess I lose. <laughs> but you won. I did. Nice. So in this video and a few others, we're going to be going through some hands that Laura played at the final table. First one, we have pocket eights on the button, 25 big blinds deep. We raise it up, nice and standard, and then small blind, JJ Lou, right? Indeed. She, three bets, small. So we make it 125K, 2.5 big blinds. She now re-raises small to six. Big blind folds back to you. Yeah, this was a tough spot, and it was the first hand, um, and it's there were things about it that set off alarm bells to me were just the small size of the three bet, and also how quickly she made the three bet. Um, so she didn't seem to have a lot to think about, um, and I just, I didn't think that she was going to do it with a pair worse than eights, and I had to decide if I was going to flip. I couldn't call, so it was whether I was going to flip at that point with 24 bigs and decided to fold. I think it's definitely an all-in or fold spot. I think the default play is all-in, but when you're playing live poker, alarm bells go off in your head. And typically if someone re-raises pretty quickly, and that's abnormal, probably means it's an automatic three bet. There is no option, right? And also, she's giving you amazing odds. Yep. Why is she giving you amazing odds and position? Seemed strange. Either she, she thinks you're weak and tight, and she's going to be able to push you around, or she has the nuts. You folded. I did. She had pocket aces. Good fold. Thank you. I had a spot in the main event yesterday where I raised the button with kings. Small blind three bevy. He's been pretty straightforward. Long story short, he had the pocket aces. And I did not lose all my money. I lost some money. Just called and didn't. Just called, it us. comes 732. He bets the flop, I call. Turns a jack, he bets, I call. River was a six, he let it let me go check check. Wow. And I'm still in. Well That's awesome. by the time this video comes out, I'm not gonna still be in. I'll be long out of that tournament. Alright, let's take a look at another hand. You have King 10 offsuit in the hijack seat playing. 23 big lines deep, you raise it up. Maybe a touch loose, depending on how the, the table is playing. You do have the big stack on the button, right? Exactly. How is she playing? Um, she was very solid. Um, and my thinking was just, um, from the table play the day before, I had appeared, I thought, fairly tight and not, I mean, not overly tight, but not crazy. Um, and I felt that um, I had a bit of an experience edge on the players in the blinds, so decided to try to see if I could get away with a looser open. Sure. And look, I think in general the big offsuit cards like King-10 or Ace-10, stuff like that, are fine to open because you kind of block their continuing range, you kind of block their re-raising range. So it's fine. Yeah. This is probably a better hand to raise than something like 9-8 suited, For right? Sure. Because even Not though 9-8 well, suited flops way better, you're going to get 3-bet way more often. And you don't want that, right? Because then you have to fold. All right, big stack calls on the button. Flop comes, ace, ace, five, two diamonds. You have the magical king of diamonds. Yeah, and I decided to check here, and I think, um, to me, it makes sense to check most of my range there. She should have a tighter range calling on the button. Um, she's got the big stack and can put pressure on me, and, you know, if things go check, check, a lot of things can go good for me. I can get a gut shot. I can have a diamond come, um, and so I decided to check and see if she bet and what the sizing was going to be. This is a tough spot because if you check and she just goes bet, flop, bet, turn, jam, river, you have to fold basically everything. Yep. And that's tough. So you, if you're going to be checking here with the king, high, you're not planning on folding to one bet, right? Correct. You have to be sure to protect your checking range very well in this spot. What a lot of people do very wrong is they just bet all their aces 
and check everything else, and then they fold everything else by the river. And that's a bit of a problem. So anyway, make sure you protect the checking range. Check, check, though. Nice and easy. This is good. Yep. It's actually, I'm not sure if it's good. Because when it goes check, check, right. you got to think she's checking back with something she thinks it can win at the showdown. And if that's the case, then what is that? It's probably going to be a lot of random pairs. Maybe. But a lot of those rearranged pre -flops. It's kind of hard to figure out what's going on in the spot, yeah. in my yeah, mind. Yeah, I was worried that she could have a pair between fives and aces, um, and that that could be a problem. And so that's um, that definitely was going through my head. Like, in my mind, she would bet a lot of the aces. She'd bet a lot of the garbage. Mm -hmm. So it means she's going to have a lot of king high. So we yep. kind of tough to know what's yeah, going on here. Yeah, could be a problem. All right, turns to Jack. You yeah. decide to go for a little bet. Yeah, I have a gut shot now, and, um, you know, it, if she does have something like suited connectors or a low pair, now she's third pair, um, it makes it harder on her, um, and I'm very happy to get a fold, um, and I have, you know, if she re-raises me, obviously I'm folding, um, but, and I have a diamond blocker, so. Yeah, I think I might just check here, mm -hmm. because you can easily check call, Yep. right? And the nice thing about betting is if she does have a hand like pocket threes, she may just fold, which is good. Also, if she has a hand like random nine eight suited or something like that, she's not going to bluff you if you bet here, right? Because if you check, she may decide to bluff. So there's definitely merit in going for a bet. And if you're going to bet, you want to bet small. Agreed. The question is, is can you check call this on the turn and the river? And uh, I don't know. Depends on how wild she is, right? Yeah, and if she bet, I feel like if I check, I give her the green light to make... If she makes two third pot bets on the turn and river, and it's just a blank, and I'm, I'm having to fold and possibly fold the best hand. Maybe you just so. call it off. Feels dirty, but, uh, you know, she yeah. may put you on the pocket eights or something and uh, decide to blast you. It's, it's tough to know yeah. what's going to happen in this spot, because, like, in the high stakes games, I'm definitely trying to induce a bluff here. Because they're not going to fold out the pocket threes to one bet, mm -hmm. so that's not good. Um, they will fold out the 9-8 suited if they had it, but they're probably just going to bet the flop with that anyway. So it's like if they don't have that that type of hand and they're not going to fold out pocket threes, then I'm not sure we're getting a whole lot done with the bet. You know what I mean? I agree. So you want to make sure your opponents are going to respond as you expect they're going to respond when you make a bet here. And if she's going to do what you said she's going to do, I think it's great. Yeah. It's important to know how the opponent plays to the best of your ability and adjust, right? Adjust accordingly. You bet small. You just get the fold. You know what she had? She had pocket fours, I believe. Ooh, perfect. So, yeah. Perfect. Shows you why I should be putting out these small bets. With pocket fours, I know it feels pretty rough calling here, but I think she should probably call there. It, it's unfortunate, like... Yeah, it's hard. And also, I think that even though I opened kind of loose here, in her mind, not knowing how I'm going to play in the final table, I would assume I'm playing tighter than that. Um, and a lot of that stuff, her fours are in pretty bad shape, so I don't... I don't hate her fold, but I, I think that you're right. And against a player with all tough players, that you probably have to call one, especially a small bet. Yeah, that's the problem. Is it's a small bet, right? Getting really good odds in position. Ugh, you I hate do. it. <laughs> I think yeah. it's a spot where you just have to peel, and you're going to fold it on the river if your opponent bets, but you want to make sure you also call with some jacks that you're not going to fold or some aces you check it back you're not going to fold. Okay. So if your checking range is well-protected, it lets you call just a little bit wider with hands like fours mm -hmm. that could conceivably win. All right, let's take a look at one more hand. Ace, nine, off suit. Folds around to the button who limps. Kind of a weird spot to limp. We have small blind with 18 big blinds, big blind with 12 big blinds. This is probably a spot where the button wants to be raising and or shoving a lot. But she limps. Was this a common thing at the table? Um, she had been doing limping, and most of her limps had been um, low, sometimes off suit, uh, connectors, some suited connectors, lower things, and generally not strong hands. Um, and so that was allowing me to take a hand like ace-nine and re-raise it. But I did have to worry, like, is she trying to induce the small stack in the in the big blind? So I don't want to, like, overcommit and then end up having to, like, price myself in to call off against that stack either. And so those were things going through my mind as I was debating what to do. This is definitely a weird one where you have to ask, what does this limping range look like? Because if you know she's limping with some substandard range or whatever's happening. Like, is, is it either a really, really strong hand looking to trap or is it some nonsense? And the problem is, is if you shove, which I think is a, a reasonable default play, if she is trapping, it's really bad. Exactly. Right? So then the question becomes, if you raise small, given the other stack sizes, will she shove a lot on you or will she call or fold? Right? Because if you raise to any amount, she should probably be shoving a lot. Right. 
but she hadn't been overly aggressive at all, as you can see by the limping. And that's why I thought, to me, I think I would get pretty pure information with a small three bet. If she shall that I'm folding, uh, and I'm probably not calling versus the 12 big blind stack, because I think I raised small enough, I did not even 3x. Um, no, I did, I guess I three and a half decks, but I kept it reasonably small to try to allow myself definitely an out against the button. Um, yeah, this is a tough one. I'm trying to think what I even do here. I think I probably would have just limped, which feels rough because you let the button see the flop, but at the same time, if you raise, if the button's calling a decent amount, which I have to presume she is, mm -hmm. you're out of position with the ace nine, which it's is off, kind of not off. really where you want to be. You'd much rather have king jack suited or something that's going to flop a little bit better, I think. Yep. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, it goes back to how is the opponent going to respond. Like, if she's going to fold a lot, this is great, right? Because yeah. then you just win the pot a ton. But um, if she's going to call a lot and then just play reasonably post-flop, you don't really you don't have the ace-line offsuit because it's yeah, going to flop poorly. Other than the fact that most of her limping range had been low cards. Sure, sure. Uh, low cards, low suited connectors, and low offsuit. Um, and that's why But um, I felt like I would probably reasonably be able to take it down with a bet on the flop, but... The problem is, is a bet on the flop is a large chunk of your stack, right? Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, imagine you raise to 225, she calls. Put any flop out there that doesn't have an ace or a nine, and you're going to put out a bet of, what, 150, 200K into the 600K pot. Yeah, you just... Now you only have six or seven left, right? It starts to get a little bit dicey. For sure. So... And even this, like, now I have a pair, and it's still awful. Yeah, so, 10, 9, 8. 10, yep. 9, pretty good. You got the pair. To be fair, this is about as bad of a middle pair as you can have. <laughs> exactly. So you opt to check, which I think is fine. And we're just trying to get to the showdown, exactly. right? Or get more information that our hand is good. Because if it's like 10, 9, 8, 2, then you're probably still good. Check, check. Turns a 7. That's not good. Yeah, just gets worse. This is probably a fold now if she bets, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because this is a scenario where if there were no payout implications, you can easily check call and then... Maybe even call it off on the river because there are a lot of draws that could conceivably miss. But with payout implications, you cannot call in these spots because you have to win way more than whatever the pot odds dictate because you want to outlast the short stack and the other 18 big blind stacks. So, tough spot where I think you just got to check fold. Except it's one big blind bet. Oh! So I call it. One big blind! I was presuming a regular bet size. Right. So that I can't fold. Ooh, can't and, fold uh, for one. And I have an ace diamond blocker for the, against the back door, so that helped but it's still just awful this is kind of like that spot where i recommended earlier the, the opponent with pocket four should probably just call you know like you're not loving it you're, but you're getting really good odds here you're getting even better odds yep one big blind into 11 i mean call to go pray for a check check rivers the queen of diamonds you check she should probably be all in frequently here mm -hmm. because you have almost no jacks right yeah i mean i'd probably be betting a jack on the flop if, if I didn't, I definitely would be betting it on the turn. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a spot that a jam is going to get folds almost always. Yeah, and she has a lot of jacks in her range. And she probably just has a lot of random flushes, too. Good, right? So you check. I presume you lose the spot. Nope. Check, check! You probably lose when it goes check, check, because she must have a queen or a ten. Oh, ace-five offsuit. Hmm. All right. I would recommend she rip it in on the river. There are a lot of spots like this where, at the final table, your opponent just cannot reasonably call. Yep. Because you have all the jacks. They probably don't have very many. Yes, you're probably bluffing a lot. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, what are they going to do about it? What are they going to do? They're going to fold. And, you know, you jam your jacks when you have them. So, yeah. cool. It was very fortunate. Three fun, little, fortunate hands. They went your way. Nice job. So, we have a bunch more hands to review. We're going to do that in a future video. Thank you for being here. Thank you. If you enjoyed this, click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Leave us some comments below. Would you have ripped it in with the ace-five offsuit on the river? Yes. Would you have ripped oh, it in with the ace-five yes. offsuit on the river? You and I'd the commenters. Yes, you have to. You must. Don't be afraid. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And we'll see you next time. How would you like to have one of these championship bracelets from winning a major poker tournament? Well, here. I have plenty. I'll give you one of these. Oh. Couldn't quite get it to you. Instead, you're going to have to win your own. To get started, click the subscribe button.